Infantile X is something most of us have never heard of, but it's the most common cause of inherited intellectual disability. For our next guest, it's affected her family, not once, but twice. Before we meet Rachel, here's some of her story. It's a typical afternoon at the Clements house. There's playtime, chores, more playtime, and then finally dinner. On the outside looking in, they're a normal family, but the road to this point has been incredibly tough. And it started soon after the birth of Rachel's third child. Almost immediately after Michael's arrival, Rachel's experience and intuition told her that something wasn't quite right with her little boy. He was scared of everyone. So whereas you'd walk around in the pram with my girls and, you know, strangers would always come up and smile and, you know, they'd smile back and get a response, Michael would scream if someone came up. That was, I guess, the first indicator to me that maybe something wasn't right and I can remember um, I sent him to daycare early because I was going back to full-time work and I remember when he was one saying to one of his lovely carers, do you think there's something wrong with him? And she going, oh, he's a little bit quirky. I felt like I wanted to cry when I was asking that because nobody wants there to be anything wrong with their child. You might have a suspicion and you don't want it to be true. But as time went on, it became clear to Rachel that there was something wrong. So after countless visits to hospitals, meetings with specialists, and a huge amount of tests, the diagnosis was finally revealed. Michael suffers from Fragile X, a genetic disorder that causes intellectual disabilities, and it's a syndrome that he inherited from his mum. Look, there is an element of guilt. There, there's an element of guilt. Um... condition and um, you know he's got two little boys that are disabled which is a lot of pressure on I mean on everyone but I mean I know it's not my fault but you do feel guilty because not that you've hurt your children but you've prevented them in reaching the potential that they could have you know as a normal child. Welcome back to Studio 10. Well, before the break, we met Rachel. She has two sons living with Fragile X and she joins us now. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Had you ever heard of Fragile X and can you explain what it is? Uh, no, we hadn't ever heard of Fragile X and um, what it is, it's a genetic condition that is passed on to your child and what happens is a protein that's essential for normal brain function um, is not produced and therefore it causes intellectual disability. You mentioned, Rachel, in, in the story that um, it's difficult when, when you get the diagnosis. Yes. What was life for you like before? Because there are times when, as a mum with young kids, it's challenging. But for you, there were particular challenges that you found early on before the diagnosis. What were they? Um, Michael, the main one with Michael, my older son, is his extreme anxiety mm -hmm. in any unfamiliar situation. And that could be just going to the park or just, you know, um, going to the shops. Mm. So if we went anywhere and especially, you know, lots of people came that he was unfamiliar with, he would be extremely scared, which then he'd start screaming and trying to get away mm. and be, you know, very upset about that. So, um, yeah, th those that was one of the key indicators that something wasn't quite right. And the other indicator was his speech didn't develop as he got a bit older. So, so does, he, does he go to a special school? How do you, how do you manage him? Um, what I'm, we're very lucky that um, the Barara Christian School, where he goes to school, they were extremely welcoming and supportive. And um, they, we took him along to, to meet, you know, they met him and they said, yes, we would love to have him. And um, it's a beautiful, beautiful, supportive school and he has absolutely blossomed at that school. He loves it. So he started this year. So we're really, you know, it's such excited. a milestone, it's, isn't it? Yes. Because you want to be able to celebrate 
the positive things oh, when the, things yes. are difficult day to day to think that is such a big thing for our son That's to right. have achieved. Yes. I'm wondering about the personal impact on you, you and your family and your, you work, your, your husband works. I mean, yes. how, how are you coping with all those challenges? We're a very busy family, as all families are. I guess the extra challenges for us is, well, one thing that I find in particular is, um, you know, getting ready in the mornings. You know, yeah. often Michael won't want to get in his uniform, so we have to go through that process of explaining to him it's a school day, we have to do it. Um, you know, whereas probably children without a disability are quite happy to do that, mm. but there's little quirks that take up so much extra time. Um, so, yeah, we're very busy and, um, of course, you know, in the afternoons, Michael, for instance, has kept it together all day at school. When he gets home, he's in his comfort zone. So then we start to get a few little behavioural issues mm. happening. That's fairly normal. Yeah, yes. Well, it is, <laughs> actually. What, yes. what's the, what sort of toll has that taken on you, though, meeting these challenges? Oh, it, it has been very hard. I, mm. I mean, you know, and it's hard for any parent with a child with a disability. It's, you know, just... You've having got two, don't you? I have two, yes. And so Ben, who's he's almost three. Yes. Michael is six. Yep, nearly six. Nearly six. So in terms of, you know, you say it is difficult, are there things that you are doing for yourself? Because I imagine <laughs> there's so much extra energy that you need yeah. and patience. I hope there are things that you are doing as well to nurture yourself. Um, Greg, and my husband Greg and I, look, we have a, a great relationship and I think we support each other by giving each other time out in, mm -hmm. in interests that each of us have. So for me, it will be going and visiting some friends and, um, you know, maybe going out for dinner with friends. Mm. Um, for uh, Greg, he likes, he's got a motorbike. He likes to, you know, get away and have a motorbike ride every now and mm. again. So we do support each other. You were both working full time. I understand you're now both working part time That's in correct. order to handle the, yes. the demands of the children. Yes. Do you think employers understand um, the stress that you're under in caring for the children and combining your work and being a good employee? I think um, some employers do. It depends on the employer, I think. I think um, some employers are extremely supportive. My husband's employer, Clark Equipment, have gone out of their way to support us. Um, you know, it was a very male-dominated industry and we asked for part-time. I think he was the first male ever in the organisation to go part-time and they were just absolutely wonderful. So having a supportive employer... Mm is just takes so much pressure off. You know, we didn't want it all to fall on me because, mm. once again, you know, happy mum, happy home, that's all so of true. that, you know. Um, so that's why we both wanted to work part-time to support each other and give each other a break. You know, you have a nice break at work, mm -hmm. you're earning money to support the family. We want the best future for yeah. our children and, you know, you have to pay your mm. mortgage and you've got lots of bills with therapies, mm. medications. So we want to be able to provide those mm. to our children um, and we want, want to be able to stay employed. So that is a very important thing that employers are supportive and understanding. And what a beautiful mum you are. Your kids are lucky to have <laughs> you, <laughs> Rachel. And thank you for joining us. Thank you you're so a, much. You're so incredibly inspirational and very <laughs> courageous. Thank you, Rachel. And if you'd like to find out any more information, you can visit the fragilex.org.au website. Thanks again, Rachel, for joining us.